Howdy, I'm Eric Auer with Tilson Homes, Senior Vice President and member of the fourth generation of the Tilson family. And today we're going to talk to you about what to expect when your foundation is going to be placed on your property. So prepping your home for a foundation is a process. So obviously there was some dirt work or excavation that was done. You're going to roll up and you're probably going to see some wood forms that are set, which just make up the outside and it truly does that. It just holds the shape of the concrete. That wood's not permanent, so if it doesn't look real pretty, that's not a big deal. It's going to be torn down as soon as the foundation's placed. Then the next thing you're gonna see is we're gonna fill those forms with material. Typically it's some kind of a select fill, a kind of a sandy clay mix. Sometimes you'll see it done in the form of sandbags in other parts of the state. So it depends on where you're located as to how we're gonna fill those forms. The next part of the process is gonna be the plumbing grounds. So the plumber shows up after the fill is in and they're gonna put all of the sewer lines in. So all of your sinks, your commode lines, your showers, your tubs, Anything that goes into the, all the sewer lines that have to go out to your septic system or sewer system are run through the bottom of the foundation. So that's the next thing that goes in. After that, you get to the stage that we're at now, which is called the make ready. So the foundation concrete contractor comes back out after the plumbers are gone and they dig all of these beams that the engineer has, has specced out, which we'll get into that here in just a little while. But all of the beams are dug. They wrap all of the fill with this polyethylene vapor barrier that you see here. They're gonna run all of your post-tension cables any rebar that the engineer calls for will be placed at that time, and then all the final inspections are ordered and completed, then we place concrete. The most important part of the foundation that you're gonna notice are these beams. So we have the engineer that designs, based on the results of your soil analysis, the exact depth, width, and spacing of these grade beams. So in this case, they are 12 inches wide, 36 inches deep, and that's a minimum, and that's going in every direction. What that's doing is that distributing the load of the entire home over this soil type, and it's done so so that the soil will support the weight of this foundation in all varying types of weather conditions, whether it's extreme moisture or extreme drought, it's made to perform all year long. So the first thing that's most noticeable as you roll up, because it's some kind of a different color, in this case it's orange, they could be blue, they could be red, but these are your actual post-tension cables. So inside of this plastic is an axle-coated cable that runs through the entire length of the foundation in both directions. What will happen is after the concrete is placed, the engineer and a contractor will come back about seven to 10 days afterwards and actually put tension on these cables in both directions up to about 29,000 PSI. Now what that's doing is taking advantage of the compression strength of concrete coupled and partnered up with the tensile strength of the steel that makes for a really solid floating foundation, which is the best kind we can find to do here in Texas. In some cases, the engineer actually calls for some things that are additional that we might need. This is a great example we have here on the Canyon model home as they call for what they refer to as hard points, which in this case was 24 inches of embedment or penetration into the undisturbed soil. So if the engineer calls for those, we'll design them per their specifications and get with you on how we're gonna do those. Now another thing you're gonna notice covering all of the fill is this six mil polyethylene vapor barrier. What that's doing is there is actual moisture, of course, in the ground and concrete itself is porous. So once the concrete here is placed, it too will have a moisture content to it. What we don't want to have happen is the moisture come from the ground and pass through the concrete. Because if that happens, it could do things like kind of stain your carpet or make floors delaminate. So it's really best if we can keep that moisture separated from the ground and the concrete itself. So where we happen to be here in the Canyon model is in the garage portion, which starts here in the living area on this other side. You're gonna see in some cases, maybe some rebar. The engineer in this particular case has called for this additional rebar or reinforcement along with some uh, 5 8 with 3 8 stirrups because they were concerned with the way that this garage projects out from the main part of the home. So what that'll do is kind of minimize any kind of stress tracks that are gonna occur and really reinforce the uh, where the garage jettisons out from the rest of the home. One of the things you're gonna notice as you come up to your foundation is where we have the showers. We're not doing your typical acrylic or fiberglass pan. We do full custom tile showers on all of our homes. So you might notice a kind of a weird wooden frame spot where we're gonna actually drop the foundation of the home. That's where the shower's gonna go so that the tile setter, when he comes, he can actually build a pan custom that drains toward the center of that shower drain. And that makes a really beautiful finish. You get those gorgeous custom tile floors. What you're also gonna notice is you'll see the plumbing pipes that are going through the foundation from the various sinks, commodes, and things like that. Anywhere they pass through the beams, you're gonna see kind of a thick black plastic coating on them, kind of a rubbery coating that's known as mastic. And what that's doing is protecting the PVC pipe itself from the abrasions of the concrete so that it'll last longer over time. 
So we hope this brought some clarity to the process of our foundation placements and kind of why we do what we do. But we also know that you might have additional questions. So if you do, don't hesitate to reach out to your construction superintendent or your design consultant, and we'll get those questions answered to make sure that you're comfortable with the entire process. Thanks again for joining us for this, and thank you again for joining the Tilson family.